Um, keep this interactive because it makes it easier for me and you. Um, the session I'm going to talk about here is scoring your licensing readiness. And what do I mean by that? Um, this is um, something that we find um, you know, over time in, as, a, as a services group and we're going out there and helping customers get implemented, um, engaging in these projects. We've realized that um, these projects are often driven by a particular business function that's maybe feeling the most pain. Maybe it's IT, maybe it's R&D, PLM, some sort of problem that's identified. Uh, but the overall holistic approach isn't always factored in. You don't look at the total problem end to end. There's often not enough measurement that takes place to really understand the entire scope of the problem. Um, and what that ends up resulting is you, know, you solve maybe one problem, but other, other parts of the system aren't as well implemented, as well thought out. Um, and it ends up resulting in a deployment that isn't quite optimal. So we often find ourselves, and this is true whether you're using our technology, homegrown technologies. Um, so I'm going to talk about some things to think about uh, when beginning the licensing journey, or even if you're well into it, um, help kind of create a, or a quantitative look at what's usually a, a pretty qualitative process. Um, so beginning with just assessing your challenges. Um, do you really know where you stand? Um, you know, if you're, if you're driving this project via IT and you're looking at, you know, okay, my, my Oracle to, to entitlement system is just really, really broken and I need to solve this problem. Have you thought about, you know, all the other aspects of what needs to happen for licensing, right? How do you, do you really understand where you need to begin? Do you know, do you know the whole scope of your licensing journey kind of cradle the grave? Um, now, I bring this up because, um, you know, the, the shameless plug part about all of this is that we've developed a set of tools and, and processes to help kind of score all of this, and the bulk of the session is going to focus on all things you kind of need to think about. Uh, but it all starts at the beginning in creating an exhaustive list of what are the various topics that you're trying to address. What, what is the, the scope of this, this project? And you've got to start with a methodology, right? Um, it, I've been in this business for actually exactly 20 years this year, and it's very rare that I see people actually develop a set of KPIs. Um, and the interesting thing about that is there's always a problem that's being solved, but if you're not really, if you haven't developed KPIs up front, if you don't measure and understand what, or, you know, what are the prioritized metrics, there's no really ongoing way of showing whether this investment you've made is actually paying off. Um, we often get asked by, by customers, oh, what's the ROI we should expect? Um, and it varies. It's a, tough, it's a tough question for us to answer because it really depends on the metrics that are relevant to the organization. Uh, but it's, it's very often we find that uh, deployment or, or, a, or a, you know, an implementation takes place because something's broken, something needs to be fixed, and you're playing catch up, uh, not really looking at the overall scope of problem, not really creating the right metrics. Um, and as a result, you know, you're usually just surviving and, and making sure that the system is running without really getting the, the optimal benefit out of it. So really emphasize KPIs a lot. Is it, is it customer satisfaction? Is it you know, your, your new product introduction, your NPIs? Is, is, that, is that what's broken? I um, mean, the answer is going to be all of the above. But there's a different priority depending on what drives your organization. Are you trying to just be easier to do business with? Um, developing these KPIs, and we're starting to work a lot with, with uh, you know, customers up front that have enough lead time to start developing these KPIs. It often doesn't happen because by the time you get pulled in, you're already behind the gun and everyone's scrabbling for a, for a go live date that's looming and, um, you know, that's, that's a reality of business, that's a reality of how the world works, but um, it is really important to start thinking about what you're actually trying to solve for so you can go back and measure and, you know, when you're, when you're reporting up to why you've done this solution, um, usually, you know, uh, you don't have a, a clean way to measure what was broken before, what's, what, are the, what's, what is the system actually, what's the value you're deriving from the solution that you've implemented. Uh, and in order to do that, you've got to start digging into the details. Uh, so we, um, we find here's another area where there aren't often metrics applied. Uh, we often hear, uh, you know, we've got lots of key generators, uh, we do a lot of things manually, um, but we don't, we don't often find customers tabulating and putting kind of metrics behind all of this. Okay, I've got 45 key generators. Um, this is the duration of time they've been involved. You know, how long have they been around? Who developed them? Do we buy some third parties? Um, that's one example, but 
you know, what are the dependencies on various engineering groups for when you need an update to your systems? What are the IT dependencies? Um, there's a number of things, and I'm not going to start giving you an exhaustive list, but this is some of the you know, engagement we take place is um, looking at all the various areas uh, that licensing touches and starting applying some numbers to them. Uh, quantify all of your problems so that we can create uh, a broader picture of what the scope of your problem really is. Uh, what ends up happening is you, know, you get pulled into a project and uh, halfway through it you realize, wow, this thing is a lot bigger than we realized it was. Right? And oops, that, that, that go live date that we, we had planned for, it's getting pushed out six months because hey, we didn't even talk to the customer service guys. They've got a whole different set of problems. Uh, doing some upfront digging into the details and, and tabulating all the various areas that this solution is going to impact and putting some numbers behind them gives you a really nice framework and a really nice assessment of where you stand and, and where, you know, what the health of your, what your licensing health is, for lack of a better word. Um, this is my favorite, and is Raj in the audience? He's our licensing go-to guy. Not anymore, because we've implemented, you know, solutions to automate this, but, you know, a few years ago, you'd always sit there, oh, what happens when Raj goes on, on, on vacation? Who, who generates a license? What happens when, when, when a customer's license breaks? Every company's got one of these. Um, I don't know, where's Mark? I was, I was actually going to put a picture of Al Miner up there in my thing, but I thought he might leave by now. But every company has their licensing guy, and he's, or, you know, a few groups of people, and, and, and they have all this tribal knowledge, right? It's usually maintained in homegrown systems. There's, you know, megabytes of spreadsheets, and they, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always refer to Al as like the licensing guy. You know, any, any problem related to licensing, you, 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 Al knows the answer. I've worked with Al for a while. Um, it's, it's, it's just it's an artifact of a lot of homegrown and, and, and poorly coordinated systems. So this is one of the most common things you find. And, and the reason I bring this up is understanding the level of automation you have. You know, what are your dependencies on key personnel? It's not just the licensing person. It's, it's the person who puts in the order entry. And, you know, are your, um, how dependent are you on people and manual data entry? Um, these are things that can be measured. And, and um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up talking about this, this scorecard. Uh, but all of these different things weigh into giving you a, a basic health check. And one of the things that's, uh, that's key to that is just understanding the level of dependency you have on, on people and, and manual tools. By the way, if there's questions and comments you guys want to make, and don't wait for the end, raise your hand. And um, I know some of these topics you, know, you may forget as we go along. So feel free to interject, challenge as we go along. Um, the other part of assessing your level of readiness and understanding you know, how, how, you know, uh, how ready you are to implement a licensing system is the level of back office integration that you currently have and are able to, to integrate. Um, you know, having CRM and ERP and billing systems and all integrated, uh, it's not uncommon, but then we find that the licensing piece has usually been an afterthought and there's some guy who's, you know, taking a spreadsheet, putting a manual entry into ERP and the, the licensing component sits outside of all the other, you know, back office systems that are really nicely orchestrated and it isn't clear how you actually streamline that process and do the integration. So understanding not only the current level of automation, but what your appetite for automation integration is and how that connects all the correct systems is a key part of any initial assessment of, of where you currently stand. And again, there, there, are, there are metrics that give you a sense of just how, how long it's going to take you, what your level of readiness is, what systems you have, you know, what, what kind of interoperability you have. This is one of my favorite topics because this is another one that you almost rarely see applied to anybody who's doing an assessment is policy and governance. It's, it's always an afterthought. Um, what is the corporate policy around licensing? What happens when you know, a, a, a license file gets, gets corrupted or an entitlement's lost? Do you automatically rehost? Do you give them a 30-day license? Do you, um, often it's a product-by-product product decision. There's a product manager who's made a decision on, on how licensing is handled or it's done by customer support. Uh, do you have a system set up for emergency licenses? Uh, what happens when you want to make a change in licensing policy? You want to move from a subscription to you know, usage-based or any kind of change. Um, there's rarely a, a well thought out policy and governance that happens up front before a customer actually embarks on a journey. I don't know if um, folks that are in here who are either looking at licensing technologies or integrating um, uh, can comment on this, but 
I'm guessing that there hasn't been a lot of time spent on policy and governance. Who, who's the person who's actually going to, or, or is there a body that's going to make key decisions related to licensing, relating to changes? What's the customer experience going to be? Um, all of those, all of those aspects, uh, they are what's going to, you know, uh, be they're, they're, that the policy and governance are what's going to sort of uh, be critical to the long-term success. You know, it's it's everything that happens once you go live. How do, how does this product get maintained? How does it not become as cumbersome as the manual systems that you're trying to replace anyway? Having an established policy, having good governance, so you can maintain the health of the system over the course of multiple lifetimes. Um, this is, this is usually something that, uh, you know, the, the policy ends up getting dictated by whichever group implemented a licensing system. Um, and that's not always the right group, the right set of people to define policy. Um, it ends up going back to that licensing guy. And so the licensing guy becomes a policy guy. Um, and it doesn't always reflect what the company's trying to do long term. So when we hear, and we're hearing it increasingly often, right, customers saying, we want to be easier to do business with. Everything now is about simplifying the user experience. Um, these are areas that make companies difficult to do business with because there isn't consistency around your licensing policy. The processes aren't streamlined. As a result, everything else may work, but you know, without a well thought out and well defined licensing policy, you're 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 creating a lot of unnecessary harm um, that ends up getting blamed on the technology, where it's usually more of a business process issue. The other part is user experience. Um, this doesn't get measured very often. You know, what we hear again is a very qualitative, you know, we want, to be, we want a nice clean user experience. We, we want customers to go, we want a nice portal. Uh, but what does that mean? How are you measuring user experience? Is, is it the number of clicks they have to go through to make a download? Um, is it, you know, we've seen customers implement sat customer satisfaction service very effectively. Um, I think last year or a year ago before that, we, we showed the, the HP chart that showed their customer satisfaction go from I think 50 something percent to 80 plus percent after implementing a, a portal. And of course, we were thrilled about that because we developed and implemented the portal. Uh, but that was one of the areas where we, it was very clear what the metric was, right? They had a very clear way of measuring before and after. And it was all about seeing that curve go up. Uh, but a user experience can vary depending on your, who your customers are, what's your industry, what's your business. Uh, but we very rarely see an actual sort of uh, you know, data being applied here, metrics being derived. A, you know, uh, a consideration around what defines a simple user experience. Uh, but every single customer wants it. Again, the, the, typically what happens is, let's get this stuff all working, and then we'll just develop a, a, a nice looking portal. And there's more to a user experience than, than just having a, a, a portal that looks good and it's a key part of it. But uh, that, that's not you know, what necessarily means a good user experience. So, there's metrics that need to be applied here. You need to think about what it takes to actually quantify a, a good user experience and then factor that into, again, it's all coming back to you. Know, how ready are you? And what is your, what is your current kind of uh, licensing score, so to speak? You know, how, how optimized are you? Where are the areas you need to improve? Product insight and analysis. I know this is probably a topic that's near and dear to a lot of our PMs. Uh, when we look at our technologies, we're thinking about all of these uh, an incredible source of information that you can derive out of licensing. <coughs> Customers are excited about it as well. I can understand how many features are being used. I can understand, you know, which feature I should monetize. You know, I'm going to give trials. What ends up happening is you're scrambling just to keep these systems up and running because licensing, you haven't given enough thought into how you're going to measure all of this. So what we end up seeing is the licensing is all in place and it's really, it ends up being used just to either enforce or, you know, uh, uh, control the software, but you haven't put in the systems in place to really capture that data, use that data, incorporate that data into your systems. Uh, it's a treasure trove of information that's just lying out there in the wild, usually at your end user site, and it's not being incorporated. Uh, the technologies are all there. The systems aren't put in place because this part usually isn't factored in. It, it's hard enough already. We, what we find is it's hard enough to get, you know, the R&D teams to align with the IT teams to align with the operations teams uh, comes back to not having all of the policy and governance set up as well. Uh, but not a lot of thought is go goes into how this is going to happen. Everybody says they want it. Um, there's really not a lot of ownership around who's going to be the person that dictates how licensing is going to get integrated, how it's going to get actually you know rolled out, and then how the data is actually going to come back into your systems to feed an ongoing experience. Um, I bring it up here because you know, measuring and understanding how much insight you're getting today will give you, you know, sort of an idea of 
if you're trying to get to a better stage, right, start creating that measurement so you can go back down the road and again uh, make that assessment on how much has how much has improved. You know, have you swapped a homegrown with a third party, but you're really just, you know, you, if you're getting the same results, you've made a lot of investment without a lot of return. I might do it on time. Okay. Uh, so scoring the business, um, this is the whole, you know, measure twice, cut once. Um, I'm terrible at this, by the way. I'm not the handiest guy in the world. If you go to my house and you, you take and remove any painting, you'll find three or four holes in the wall. And with constant reminders from my wife of, why don't you just figure out where you want to hang the thing first? <laughs> Luckily, I do it a little bit better at work. Uh, we spend a lot of time helping customers measure and score their business. So the idea and everything I've been talking about here so far has all been around you know, creating the right set of data that that's makes sense for your business and working with, you know, and, uh, you know, whether it's uh, one of the, you know, the big consulting companies, you know, we, we offer this as a consultancy uh, where you come in there and understand the overall scope of the problem, put in the right metrics, put in the right measurement, um, figure out what you're solving for, not just technically and process-wise, but let's, let's get those metrics in place so that you can go back downstream and actually start understanding where has my investment paid off? Where are areas that you know, I'm, I'm scoring, you know, I implemented the system, this is great, I attended licensing live, I'm sold, you know, EMS is in production, two years down the road, you've got the exact same score, uh, something didn't go right. Either we didn't do something right or you guys didn't do something right, but that's, that's not an ideal outcome. And that's what we're trying to work against, right? We, we're trying to figure out up front, what are we trying to solve for? We want to put some metrics behind it so we're giving you some tools and some ability to go back and understand how much the health of your business has improved. Um, if it's a combination of increased revenue, better user experience, uh, being simpler to do business with, let's start putting metrics behind these uh, and let's start build the processes in place to help measure that so you can understand how much, you know, how much uh, your, your systems are improving as a result of the right. You know, are you using the right technologies? Do you have the right processes in place? You can't really answer those questions if all of the knowledge is kind of sitting as, as tribal knowledge with a few people in the organization who are tasked with you know, um, this, this licensing job because nobody else wanted to deal with this, the, this magnitude of a problem. It has to be a, a corporate initiative. Finally, part of uh, this entire kind of readiness, and you know, we were, this is uh, a little bit different from the measurement part, but um, you know, uh, worth noting, we're seeing this more and more. Everyone's kind of been driven by this whole notion of an app store experience. Uh, we're finding companies that are as far removed from anything the close to consumer coming to us and saying, we want, we want to sell software, we want an app store experience. Uh, you know, um, we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, storage device vendors that are selling, I mean, this is boring stuff, right? They're, they're selling data storage. And they're saying, hey, we want to create all these peripheral tools that add value because, you know, when, when somebody buys our, our uh, storage, uh, uh, you know, these big data storage uh, servers, they sit around and rack for, you know, five, ten years. And, you know, we built the system so well, you don't need more of them. So we need to figure out more stuff to sell. So everyone is trying to add more value in the software. If you're not making that software easily accessible, if you're not monetizing that software appropriately, if you haven't sort of thought through how you want to measure the, the level of software monetization sort of efficiency you want to reach, um, you're not really, you know, uh, you're never really setting a target for what you want to achieve. What you end up doing is you end up replacing a third party with a, uh, uh, you know, with a, you know, a build, it's a build versus buy decision, but the overall value that you're getting out of your system hasn't fully been realized. And that's what the whole purpose of the scorecard is, is to help you guys get through this journey of actually getting more value out of your investment. Uh, so I'll give a shameless plug here to um, the best practices methodology and, and scorecard we've developed. I think it's in your app. Is that right, Marcy? Yeah. There's a link in the app to it. Um, this is a relatively high level one. Uh, we work to create bespoke ones with vendors where we have a lot more detail that's relevant to your business that would be custom uh, to what you guys are trying to achieve. Uh, but the idea here is to go in there and you know, take, the, take the test and, and see how you score. It um, be great for us to see what that looks like. Um, you know, we've done it ourselves and uh, it, it, it's not here to give you a, you know, it's not an A, B or C grade. It's an idea to give you some insight into, hey, uh, what, is, what is my level of readiness? Uh, what should I be thinking about uh, when, you know, six months down the road, I've gone live and I want to go and see how, how is, you know, somebody comes to you and says, so that, 
that licensing uh, you know, technology that you integrated and implemented, um, how's it working for you? And you know, the answer shouldn't be, well, it's not broken. I think it's working fine. Um, uh, the answer should be, uh, here is, here's, what was, here's what we scored before. Here's the areas where we were really broken. This was the level of automation we've achieved. And being able to put some metrics behind it makes your ability to have increased investment in improving this, this whole licensing kind of paradigm a lot, a lot easier. And I don't know if I'm under time, but I wanted to leave enough time for questions because I've been reminded that I tend to ramble on and, and go long sometimes. Uh, there's also a, a, a white paper that helps you kind of, you know, um, a lot of what I've talked about and uh, you know, with a lot more detail around things you should think about and considerations around preparing yourself for, uh, for a level of, you know, scoring yourself and a, just giving yourself that self-assessment. Uh, the, the white paper's got um, some really interesting, interesting material in there as, as food for thought as you're either beginning this journey or, you know, thinking about, you know, improving uh, existing systems. Questions for Jan for professional services in general? Okay, thank you very much, Jan.